explain to us why plus minus two is not square root, Tyler? No number times itself is a negative. No number times itself is a negative. So forget about plus or minus two being the square root of specifically negative four. No real number, let's say, times itself is a negative. So no real number times itself is negative. That covers the square roots of all negative numbers, so that's why we only go by itself when we get a negative. What kind of number can be the square root of a negative? One, the number one, is the basis of the real number system. And it's tough when you think about it. One plus one is two, that's where we get two. We keep adding one and getting all those numbers, and we can start taking those numbers that we made and dividing them into rational numbers, and then we can start uh, taking square roots and getting other numbers, right? But it all hinges on one. And imaginary numbers, what's the one of the imaginary world? What is the very basic imaginary number? So if we came back over here and we take the square root of both sides and we have the square root of z squared equals the square root of negative 4, and we use imaginary numbers, not real numbers, how do we use imaginary numbers to write the square root of negative 4? times the square root of 4. Remember, what's i? Negative 1. Square root of negative 1. If we take the square root of negative 1 from the square root of 4 inside, when we combine those square roots, we get the square root of negative 1 times 4. And what's the square root of 4? So we write plus or minus, and I would put 2 in front just because that's what we usually do. We put numbers in front of letters and we multiply them. Just for tradition. We all appreciate a good tradition. All right, so you guys who have handouts, the flip side is this next slide. So Kate has combined these complex numbers incorrectly. Here is her work. So she's done this. And here I'm saying, why is Kate not completely finished with her last step? Something that's really lacking. I squared, I to the third. Okay, they can be uh, simplified to other things, right? They might be real numbers, they might be imaginary numbers, but they'll come out to be either uh, negative one, negative i, uh, one, or come back around with the i again. So what is i squared? times i squared. i squared is negative 1, so we have 125 times negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1. I could have just written minus 1. Then we have 30 times negative i. So negative 30i. Then we can just That's right. We got like terms there. We got negative 125. We put the real number first. Not because it's right and the other way is wrong. It's just tradition again. Plus
block. Well, I think I found the correct uh, value for C. something squared, right, equals whatever. Why do we want to write it as something squared? Why, why do we want to ultimately write it as a factor squared? That way we can take the square root. We can use that square root. We can take the square root of both sides. That way we don't have to factor and do that x method, you know, with the ac and b and all that kind of stuff. We don't have to worry about that. Square. That means if we have a factor squared, that means we have two identical factors right, multiplied by each other. Good there. So what we want is two identical factors. So Locke writes two identical factors and multiply together. He's making, making it so that he does get x squared. Agreed? Does get x squared. What else does he have to get when he multiplies these together? He's got to get negative 13x. He needs, these two numbers have to be the same because the, the, the factors have to be the same. So these two numbers have to be the same. And they have to add together when you multiply this times x and this times x. They have to add together to make negative 13. Right. When we talk about two identical numbers that add to make some other number, Really, just for the uh, I don't know, use kind of complicated words, got really fancy to really say half of that number. Right? The half of a number is a number when you add it to yourself, uh, add it to itself, you get that number. It's kind of like a square, but it's an addition instead of multiplication. Right? So we're looking for two identical numbers that add together to make negative 13. Well, that number is just half of 13. We can do this with every one of these. We can take uh, anything that is 1 times x squared minus 13x, or minus whatever, or plus whatever x, and this guy's going to be half of that. So just take half of this number, and that's just right, half divided by 2, negative 13 divided by 2. This one also has to be half of 13, negative 13. Okay. So does that part make sense? Two identical factors. Each of them has a half of 13. way it's going to have to factor is this way. Okay. But this is not the same as this. If we were to multiply this together, we'd get a constant. Where would that constant come from? An imaginary number. When we multiply these together, we distribute this stuff into here. x times x is going to give us x squared. 
negative 13 halves x minus 13 halves x is going to give us negative 13x. Where's this number going to come from? Negative 13 halves times negative 13 halves. Here we have 13 halves times 13 halves. Try to find that c value. Should have gotten 169 over 4. Even if we did negative 13 halves times negative 13 halves, it still come out to be positive. Negative 13 times negative 13 is negative 13, right? 2 times 2 is 4, not 2. So that's the value of C. This value right here, this number right here should be 169 over 4. If we were to make that 169 over 4, then it would be able to factor as two identical factors so that we can write it as x minus 13 over 2 squared. We're not going to do anything with it in this problem because it's not equal to anything, so we're not going to take the square root of both sides. There is no both sides. It's just that. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Right, Sawyer now solving this quadratic equation. Uh, yeah, should be a flip side there. So in the uh, step marker with an arrow, has Sawyer forgot? Step mark with an arrow. Right. A second. Just leave him from step from the original, his first handwritten step. What's different and what did he forget? Write that down in your notes. Dividing it by two. Eight, 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 divided by two. Oh, okay, so what's negative 18 divided by two? Nine. <laughs> That's where you got that. They should have subtracted 86. Should have subtracted 86? Or could have subtracted 86? Could have. Could have. So it doesn't have to have done that, right? Yeah. It's certainly a way to do it. In fact, that's a question I'm going to ask in a second. You know, what else can we do with that 86? But I if he chooses to do this, five. what should he do? He should have added 81. Okay, so the way, we, what we're identifying is there's a lots of different ways that we can go about this. Okay? The way that Sawyer has approached it is this. He's recognized that 86, or maybe he hasn't recognized it. He's just like, I'm going to move 86 over and say, it's probably not the value of c that I want. It's not that one that'll make it a perfect square. So he just scoots it over, gets it out of the way, and then he finds the perfect number, the number that will work. Okay, that number is 81, because when you multiply negative nine times negative nine, we get 81. Okay, so if that's what he chooses to do, the thing that is incorrect is not adding 81 to both sides. You gotta add 81 to both sides. So what has he forgotten to Add 81 to both sides. Okay. Now, in all of that discussion, I heard at least two different ways that we could have done this. Tyler, <coughs> you had one? We could subtract 86 from both sides. Instead of scooting it over to the right, we could actually just subtract it from both sides. So we could subtract 86. And then ultimately we would handle it the same way. Right? 
at 81 to both sides. Uh, negative 86 plus 81 would give us the negative 5. Um, Caroline, what was the idea you had? Uh, just added 5 to each side. Or subtracted 5. Subtracted 5, because if you take a look at here and you, you just ask yourself, what does this number have to be? And, and maybe factor it and say, well, negative 19, negative 9 needs to be not 86, 81. So we just turn 86 into 81 by subtracting 5 from both sides. That'll do it. Subtract 5 from both sides. Which one's the best <coughs> way to do it? Just move, uh, move the, uh, There's no best way. There's a, ba there's a way that makes the most sense to you. There's, there's right and there's wrong. Okay, one thing that's wrong is to not do the same thing to both sides. Uh, the right thing would be to, to do the same thing to both sides. And as long as you do the same thing to both sides, it makes sense to you, and it's working out, it's getting simpler and simpler and simpler as you take each step, that's the way you want to do it. Okay. I'm not going to prescribe this one way that you do it that's like it. There is no it. There is no one way. Um, not far off of, of either of these, maybe closer related to this one, you could also do this. x squared minus 18x plus, we know we want it to be 81. 81 plus 5 is 86. So now we don't have to do anything to both sides right now. Right? We just turned 81 or 86 into a sum of two numbers, one of which is 81. Then we would subtract 5 from both sides. And we'd be left sitting into this, or into this. It's all going to come out. It's going to be a wash, I guess, any way you do it. Okay. Might as well finish this one out so we see it happen. The whole idea here was on the left side to have the perfect combination of numbers, to have this perfect trinomial that factors as a perfect square. Okay? On the other side, it's just whatever else there is. If you subtract 5 on both sides, you get this is equal to negative 5. We did this. We did all this work to find 81 so that this would happen. x minus 9 times x minus 9. See that it does factor like that because x times x is going to be x squared. We're going to have, if we had written another factor of x minus 9, we'd have x times negative 9 is negative 9x. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x and negative 18x. So negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81. Okay, get the square root of both sides. x minus 9 is equal to plus or minus i root 5. Anytime you have the square root of a negative number, you can always just go. I times the square root of the positive. Because all I is is just a representation, it's just a letter that represents the square root of negative 1. And we add 9 to both sides, we get 9 plus or minus I root 5. Alright, this is the last one. Very good at math. Does it right. Okay. He's catching on. Uh, so the first thing you can see, he goes from 2k squared plus 16k equals negative 12 to the half of all those things. 1k squared, 8k, negative 6. Why does he do that? Why does he divide by 2? Write it down.
because you can, okay, simply, you know, smaller numbers are nicer to work with. Okay. Is that it? Just because you can? What if you can't? Should you still do it? Kayla? Um, Just k squared, but times one, one times k squared. Not two times k squared, not two times k squared, or one half times k squared. We like to have one times k squared. Um, if we didn't, if we didn't get one times k squared, that would make the next part pretty tricky, right? To find a perfect square trinomial with not a one in front. Think back to last class. We did a bunch of these. Did any of them have a Anything other than a one in front of k squared or x squared or whatever? No? We like to write all of them this way, right? K or x, whatever, but just always with a one in front of it. If we have a two here, now we have to write two identical factors so that these two multiply together and give us two k squared, which at the very least, you could say, is certainly can do it, uh, make small numbers, and the next part where we try to find a perfect square, uh, also that's easier. Okay. To get uh, one k squared. If you come along one of these and you're trying to do complete the square, you should try and get one k squared. You should try to do that every time. Okay. So this first line here, first handwritten line. The right side is negative 6. And the second line is 10. Why? Right? Why is it? Why do we go from negative 6 to 10? That's the thing we need right here to make this side a perfect square trinomial, so we can add 16 to both sides. If we, if we cover that back up, this plus 16, if we don't have that again, this is not the factor form of k squared plus 18, or plus 8k. If we were to multiply this out, we would get that 16. Once we factor it like that, once it's factored as k plus 4 times k plus 4, there's a 16 like in there in that information, in that factorization, there's a constant of 16, and we need to represent that 16 in the previous. Okay. Um, why well, added 16 to both sides. That is all. All for the quiz. Are there any questions for the homework?
assume this, but or why I assign this? I should I should strike it from the assignment. In fact, this isn't part of the assignment, so or did I did I type that out? But there is, if you were curious, there's the absolute value symbol there, right there. So if you look back on page 279, we have absolute value of, um, of complex numbers. Um, absolute value A plus BI is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay. Well, to help, maybe we'll write this as A plus BI. Um, so if we realize that that's what we're looking at, to apply this would be 2 plus negative bi. That would equal the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, not minus 3 squared. So we 4 plus 9. Skateboard shop sells about 50 skateboards per week for the price advertised, $70, it says on that side. For each dollar increase in price, <coughs> about one more skateboard per week is sold. The shop's revenue can be modeled by, okay, so they're basically representing that situation uh, in this equation. Uh, use vertex form to find how the shop can maximize weekly revenue. Um, so they're saying every time they add a dollar onto, um, onto the price of a skateboard, which you would think charging more for skateboards would make you some more money, right? But what happens when you charge more for things? You lose customers. You lose customers, so few people are, fewer people are going to, uh, uh, oh, we're decreasing, so we're decreasing money. So if we decrease, we make less per skateboard, but then we might gain customers. But at some point, we're going to start charging so little that tons of people are buying them, and we're not making any profit whatsoever, and we're losing money. So if there's some kind of a optimized number of dollars, they should uh, take off the price of the skateboard. Okay. So if you want to know uh, how much you're making, you just take the uh, the cost per item, right, your x number of dollars times however many number of things you're selling, right? So if you sell uh, skateboards for $70 a piece, and you sell five of them, 70 times five is how much money you made, right? Make sense? Take the number of dollars per unit times the number of units each you've sold. And then that is, uh, so if you took, take a look at this equation, y equals 70 minus x. What does, what's 70? Why 70? Um, let's see. No, they sell about 50, it says. For 70 times 5. Seems like it's a problem, right? Yeah? That's how much they make off of each skateboard. Currently, that's how much they charge for a skateboard. Okay. So it's 70 minus x about in this scenario. What does x represent? Dollars. What's that? Dollars. So you're going to take a dollar off. The cost of the skateboard, right? You take a dollar off, give it sixty-nine dollars. Take two dollars off, give it sixty-eight dollars. So, so this is the cost per skateboard. So dollars per skateboard, and they've got fifty. Why fifty? What's that? They're selling about fifty right now. If they didn't take any money off, they would sell them seventy dollars a piece, and they'd sell about fifty of them. Seven times fifty about how much money they make. Okay. But if they take a dollar off, one dollar off, they will also increase the number of skateboards by one. So that's convenient. One and one, so they both get to be x. Okay, so this would be. 
the number of boards. We take the, the dollars per skateboard, the number of, or the amount they charge per skateboard times the number of boards. That'll tell them how much they made that week. Okay, but every time they take a dollar off, they gain a new customer. Okay, so if they do too much off, they're gonna gain way too many customers, and they're not gonna be making enough profit. Okay. Uh, if we multiply this together, uh, 70 times 50 is 3,500. 70 times x, times x. Uh, x times, or negative x times 50, times 50x. And negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x squared plus 20x plus 3,500. <coughs> This is a quadratic equation. If we were to graph it, what kind of a shape would it make to graph quadratic? Parabola. Parabola. Which way does this parabola open? Down. Down with the negatives in front of the x squared. So something like this. Okay. Now this is a function that tells them if they sell this or they take off this many dollars. Okay, that's what x represents, how many dollars they take off. This is how many dollars they can expect to make in a week. Okay? So maybe right now they're right here. They could be making more money if they take off more dollars and sell more skateboards. Okay? So there is the most money they can make right there at the very top. Right? What's that point called? The vertex. The vertex. Okay, we want to write it in vertex form to find the vertex. Okay? We can use completing the square to do just that. Thing though about completing the square is we want a positive x squared there, right? We want a positive x squared. So here's what we can do. And 3,500 is probably not the number we're looking for, right? If it were, then it would have already subtracted from the square. So we'll undistribute a negative. We'll factor out a negative. Negative times x squared, right? See, negative times x squared gives us negative x squared. Okay? We'll make this a negative 20x. So that negative times negative 20x is positive 20x. Okay. So this is the part we're going to make into a perfect square. And then we'll add 3,500. We don't need to include 3,500 in this because, well, we probably don't have numbers at all. Okay. So if we were to write this as a perfect square, then what number would go here? 100. 100. Divide negative 20 by 2 to get negative 10. Now, you got a negative in front, but this part right here factors as factors as what? Negative, <coughs> negative x minus 20 squared. Well, the negative, right, this was already positive, right? So the negative yeah, is the negative positive. Times oh, times oh times negative times x squared, or not x, x minus 10 squared. First there wasn't a hundred, but now there is a hundred. So it's added a hundred. Can you just do that? Just add a hundred. You gotta keep it balanced, right? Yeah. How do we keep that balanced? Each side. Okay, do it to each side, which is good. But the other side is a Y. Okay. This other side is a Y. We don't typically just add things to Y. Right? What's that? Um, no, why is that even, why is just the, the amount of money they can expect to make, which we don't want to force them to make zero dollars, <laughs> so we don't want to do that. Um, so instead of adding 100 to y, right, if we've added 100 on this side, then we should just do the opposite on the same side so that it all cancels out. Okay. The only thing we need to recognize is that we have a negative in front, so this is actually a negative 100 is like we minus the 100 from this side. So if we minus the 100 here, we should add 100 here. Just balance it out. I subtract 100, add 100, I've not done anything. But with the 100 right here, we get that, that factoring that we want. Okay, so it's not 3,500, it's 3,600. So this is
is the vertex form of my parabola, of my quadratic equation, if I was doing the vertexes. Where is the vertex? Ten what? What does ten represent? Ten dollar reduction in the cost for skateboard, and thirty six hundred is. Ten well, how much money though? First, I'm going to tell you what we're generally like what the map of today looks like. Um, we're going to solve a few of these. Okay. The reason I'm picking the quadratic equations that I am, this is from 4.7, so I'm not even 4.8. I'm picking them because we have something other than 1 instead of x squared. So we're going to deal with that. We're going to do that two, maybe three times. Solve uh, quadratic equations like that using completing the square. So if you feel good about that, you can go ahead and start. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you think that something about the class could be better, you have some suggestions, then that sheet of paper has been up there for a while. You feel free to, right there by the, on the orange board next to the pencil sharpener. It's just a, it's mostly anonymous. I can turn on a thing to see the last four digits that I remember, but I have no interest in knowing that. I don't want to say it is anonymous. Um, it's anonymous in as much as I won't care and I won't look. So, just full disclosure, if that's possible, but I wouldn't be looking at it. If you want to text a suggestion, um, feel free to do that. It's like a suggestion box. It gives you a little suggestion box. Uh, so just go ahead and do that. And I'll check that from time to time and see what you're saying. All right, so here we are, quadratic equation. Um, I'm going to let you try it. For a brief amount of time, and then we'll work through it together and let you answer more on your own. So, go ahead and at least write it down. Okay. Well, do you remember? Do you remember Saeed? Yeah. Keenan? Yes, sir. Do you remember him? He solved the problem a lot like this. He did? Yeah. Excellent. So here's his work. What was the first thing Saeed did? Well, change it to just k squared, 1k squared. So that might not be a bad idea for us to try. How are we going to get a 1x squared? We'll divide by 4 on both sides. Divide by 4. Everything. Divide by 4. x squared times 10x minus 3 equals 0. Chauncey? You alright? Your homework's alright? Minus five. Okay. So that's great. Um, just because this guy, I can't remember how we got ten. On the other side. Yeah. Because yeah. it came from 
16, where does 16 come from? So when you, right, so the number we need right here is when we multiply negative five by negative five. We have the x minus five times x minus five because that's half of negative 10, right? You gotta add 25 to the pen. <laughs> add 25 to both sides, to both sides. Right, so this much right here factors as this. This minus three is still there, it equals 25. So we have x minus five squared. Add three to both sides, we get 28. Okay, the ultimate goal of completing the square has been achieved, so that we can now do what? Take the square root of both sides. Excellent, x minus five equals plus or minus the square root. Why am I writing two square roots here? Because we can factor it. Because we can factor 28. Seven. Why is that good? Because four is a perfect square. Because four is a perfect square. Exactly. Just simplifying this side over here. Two root seven. Two by x minus five. Add five to both sides. X equals. Add five to this. Five plus minus two root two. If I were to give you another quadratic. Another one that has a number in front of x squared, a number that's not one. Do you think that it's going to be pretty similar to this one? The way that we solve it? No. No? I should have. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's already much more complicated. It's going to be complicated, but I should have just. It could be more complicated, but the, like, the steps are going to be similar. similar. It's going to be very similar. All right. So let's. Do that again. Let's see if we if we can each individually internalize these steps so we know exactly what to anticipate. So I'm just going to give you another one just like that with a number in front of x squared, like five root just thirty one. Divide both sides by three, divide both sides by three. S squared plus two S plus three equals zero. Gotta get that one S squared. That's what we really want. Okay. So S squared plus two S plus three we want that to factor as a perfect square, as two identical factors. With the plus three there, does it do that? No, it doesn't. So maybe we'll subtract three from both sides and just make room for work. Plus something equals negative three. Do we maybe know how this needs to factor? How does it need to factor? S plus one times s plus one. s plus half of that times s plus the other half of that. So what does that make this? One. one. This times this will be one. What's the little thing I'm forgetting maybe? Add one to both, Add one to both sides. So s plus one times s plus one, that's how this factors. This factors to s plus one times s plus one equals negative two. s plus one squared. Sides, root, root, s plus one equals plus or minus the square root of negative two. And then 
square root of negative 2 we can write as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of positive 2. When we multiply those two together, we get the square root of negative 2. And the square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 2 can't be simplified, so it stays. S equals, we'll subtract 1 on both sides, negative 1, plus or minus i. by the thing in front of s squared, uh, move everything to the other side, find that number that makes a perfect square, make it a perfect square, collect everything else on the other side, square root both sides, subtract 1. That's the answer. Same thing, every time. Well, these ones work out nicely because uh, this number is divisible by 3, this one's divisible by 3. These are all divisible by 4. All right. So actually doing it is not too bad. All right. What would make this a little bit more difficult? By that number, yeah. Uh, that, that would make it a little more difficult. But possible? Then we'll say that process can be done to every problem like that, every equation that's like that, we can do that. Uh, and we can just take those numbers, the one in front of x squared and the one in front of x as a constant, we will take them to the same exact step every time. Okay. Now it's, it is now uh, a Montana State standard. We should be able to not only use the quadratic formula, which is over there, which at least some of you, if not all of you, have at least seen and used. Okay. But not only do you need to use it, you need to be able to derive it. You need to be able to make it. Okay. And I'll show exactly how to do that today, but we're not going to do anything revolutionary. We're just going to do the same thing we've been doing. It's just that we're going to have to do it to variables rather than specific numbers. Okay. So here's what we'll do. We'll go back. Grab this guy, okay. and we'll do the same steps that we did to that to a general quadratic equation. So first we'll set it up as a general quadratic equation. We'll always have it be equal to zero so we always start from the same place. Any quadratic can be written as some number times x squared plus some number times x plus some number equals zero. Even if it started out not equal to zero, like equal to five, right? If this side were five, could we get the side if it was five to be zero? Yeah. How? Subtract, um, subtract it by five. Subtract five on both sides, so you got five on the side is zero, and now it's Whatever that was to start with minus 5 is going to be c. So we can set up any quadratic equation to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. 
So that's where we'll start. So every problem that we do, every problem we use a quadratic equation on, quadratic formula, sorry, on needs to be set up this way. Okay. But we just did this, this twice. We did it with this one, we did it with the, the one after that. Um, we set it equal to zero, but we just did the same set of steps each time. So we'll do those same steps for A, B, and C. And we'll get started. What was the first thing we did there for number 30, the specific problem? Divided by 4, divided by, well, A, whatever A is, in order to get 1x squared, we'll divide everything by A. Okay. We'll divide everything by A. Just like that. We divided by 4, and the other one we divided by 3. I think in the other quadratic equation that you saw was like this. You're going to divide by that number that times x squared. So A divided by A is 1, so we get x squared plus B over A times x over a equals 0 divided by a, which would be 0 squared. So far we just divided by 4, right, essentially. It's the same as dividing by 4 and that number 30. Okay. Yeah, then that, what was the next thing that we did? Simplifying it? So this is just uh, let's see. Dividing by 4, covering up 25, just gave us x squared minus 10x minus 3 equals 0. So what do we do after that? Find two identical factors. Find two identical factors? Okay, let's go with, with that. Right? These guys right here, those are the ones that are going to tell you what your identical factors are. <coughs> x uh, plus something. What did we find that something here? Where is it? Five something, or negative five something? Well, we did. Th we found twenty-five by finding that these were five. How did we find five from that information? Covering up with negative five, divided by ten by two. We found that half of of uh, negative ten is negative five. So we need half of this number. So we take b over a and divide it by 2. That's kind of difficult. How do you take b over a and divide it by 2? Mm -hmm. No. We're trying to distribute this both of these. So we're trying to divide by 2. We're trying to divide a fraction by 2. It would be easier to multiply by the reciprocal of 2 instead of divide by 2. What's the reciprocal of 2? B over A times 1 over 2, and that'd just be B over 2A. Just to add in. Rewrite this the same way. B over 2A. Now keep in mind, we ju that's just telling us how this is going to have to factor, but we need to figure out what that 25 is. How do we figure out what 20, that this was supposed to be 25? What's that? No, I'm just saying, how do we figure out how 25 was? a by b over 2a. We're going to take b over 2a and square it in the middle, plus c over a. When we added 25, what did we make sure to do as well? Add it to both sides. So we got to add to this side a b over 2a squared. Thank you. 
we take b over 2a and square it, what does that mean to square a number? Multiply by itself. Multiply by itself. So we multiply b over 2a by b over 2a. b over 2a times b over 2a. Multiply straight across, what do we get in the numerator? b squared. b squared. 2a times 2a? 4a squared. 4a squared. following along with this one. What do we do next? Add a true result. So we got rid of that thing. We don't want that thing. We just want the square factor. So we'll subtract c over a from both sides. So we got our square factor, x plus b over 2a squared equals b squared a squared minus c over a. Um, so this part is going to take a couple more steps before we come back and match up with this thing right here. Um, let's add these fractions or subtract these fractions or however you want to look at it. Take this fraction minus this fraction. What do we need if we're going to It's got a, a denominator of 4a squared. It's got a, fa uh, yeah, a denominator of a. We need to find a denominator that we can right, multiply this by something and multiply this by something and just save it up and multiply it by something else. This one? Multiply this by 4a. So multiply this by 4a. That'll give us 4 times a times a. That's 4a squared. So maybe we have to multiply this by anything. So we'll multiply this by 4a as well. So we got b squared over 4a squared and 4ac over 4a squared. So we got b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. That's all we did was put those two fractions together by finding a common denominator. Okay, so right about Square factor equals all the leftovers on this side. It's just all the leftovers. Believe it or not, to find 28, we did the equivalent of all this. Uh, the original b squared it, subtracted 4 times a times c, divided by 4a squared. What do we do next then? Once we got our square factor, that was the whole thing. That's why we did getting the square. What do we do after that? Find the square root. Square root, square root. So this side is easy enough. Just cancel out the square. That was the whole point. Okay. This side we get plus or minus. We take the square root of both sides and then we're going to plus or minus. And at the same time, we're going to simplify this square root of this fraction a little bit. Square root of the numerator. The square root of the denominator. This side will stay the same because we've got, we can write this more simply on the right side. So minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. What's the square root of 4a squared? Can we multiply something by itself and get 4a squared? Yeah. 2a. That'll work out nicely. Let's see, we got x plus a thing equals plus or minus the square root. Uh, x minus a thing equals plus or minus the square root. What do we do next? Yeah, we got rid of this constant that's over here with x. We got x by itself. One last thing, subtracting b over 2a. x equals, okay, now, rather than, um, yeah, rather than, um, writing this minus b over 2a, I'm going to write negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. They have a common denominator, so we can actually put them as one fraction.
So we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over the common denominator 2a. So the third is over there, the quadratic formula I wrote down for my calculus class the other day. quadratic formula. And I imagine the day that the, whoever came up with this first, whenever that was that day, got very excited, very cool idea. So bad for him. <laughs> All that work he had to do, he didn't know how to do it. All the work he had to do that he didn't know how to do it? Yeah, he did. He did it. Yeah. Well, he did it before that. given a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, we've done all of this work, all this completing the square work to any possible values of a, b, and c. They're all going to have to go through all these steps. Okay. What we have now on the right side is this expression that does all of those steps to a, b, and c. Right before that, we did have a process called completing the square that can solve any quadratic equation. It might have gotten messy, might have difficult for you. But believe it or not, this is a lot more neat than having to do that completing the square process over and over and over. All we have to do is take A, know what A is, B, and C, plug them in, and kill. So, um, like I said, I am, it is expect, expected by the state of my pen that you will be able to derive the quadratic formula. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think being able to derive that uh, reinforces a lot of the understanding behind the quadratic formula rather than it being a, a magic trick. Um, but we also need to be able to use it, so we're going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Just write down x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Gotta plug in the number. Sixty 
64 minus 64 is zero. What's the square root of zero? We just get 8 over 16. So we could have approached this as before. Apparently, we, we ran up with a 1 half, so that tells us that the original one we could have done a factor. There's no square roots involved or any pies or anything like that. Um, could have factored it, but I bet you this was a lot faster than factoring. Alright, so saw me do it. Let's get it out together. I'm going to give you one 